Welcome to the world's first Black Nerd Empowerment Podcast for the Nerd. With your boy, the TV Guru 108. And you're the snowman. And we're back another week to talk this shit. Um, if you want to find us, um, you can find us on Facebook at Swarthy Nerd. We're on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast. We're on Stitcher. We are basically everywhere. Um, we're also on Instagram at Swarthy Nerd and on Twitter at Swarthy Nerd. Um, if this is your first time listening, we used to start off with segments. Our first segment is what we've been up to. Um, I'll go first. Um, I, I have been watching a few things. The first thing I watched was His Dark Materials. It returned for its second season. Um, you guys and girls probably heard me talk about it last week. Uh, last week. <laughs> last uh, year when it came out. Uh, His Dark Materials is about uh, this fantasy world um, where it's not, they, they have like, it's not magic, but they have, um, it seems like it's like a steam, steam punk, not steampunk, but like steam industrial like revolution. It's like a, uh, I don't know, revolution. I'm trying to, they have technology, but they don't have like cell phones and stuff like that. And it's about this young girl who's um, a part of a prophecy to fulfill something. And it also is follow this young boy who's in our world, our real world, where we have phones and cars and yeah. shit. And somehow they're connected. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, they somehow they somehow they connected and it's a it's a mystery behind it. Um and it's a war going on between uh witches and this religious sect um of people who like uh don't want to talk about it, that it's other worlds and other realities and stuff like that. They want to keep everybody, you know basically dumb and not knowing stuff. So kind of like the at least of this role? Basically. Some yeah, some basically like that. Keeping yeah. us dumb dumb while they get smarter for the knowledge that yeah. they took from us. Yeah, the the young girl, she has an uncle who uh raised her, um, but we found out her uncle is really her father. But fuck all that. Season two has started. Season two is about her going through the portal to to another world. And also the young boy from the uh, our world, he does as well. We found out these two people are related because her uncle slash dad um, basically jumped on both, jumped in both worlds and was doing jumping jumping back and forth between both worlds. And he slept with this black lady and had a kid, and he slept with this uh, one lady and had a kid. Um, what's so crazy is the white girl who has the prophecy on her. Her mom is like a crazy person who like kidnapping children and all that shit to sever their demons because they had these things called demons, basically like spirit animals, but they call them demons for some reason. Um, and like they, you get it when you uh, uh, when you're a kid and it, it can turn into any form of type of animal, but the, the demon has to choose what it wants to be. Her demon hasn't chose yet because she hasn't really matured or the demon has yet. Um, but the second season is really good. Um, I, I wanted them to do this in the first season, have her come into our world and see what they're talking about. And it was dope. Um, we only two episodes in, but I really like it. Um, she basically trying to find out what is this thing called dust. Because in their world, they call something called dust. It's like they think it's bad for um, like humanity. It's dust is sin. And when she was explaining this to the person from our world, he just started laughing and like, dust? <laughs> Girl, you know what dust is? <laughs> and But we find out, actually, it has something to do with dark matter. Um, everybody know about dark matter. It's the mysterious yeah. energy that's all around everything and everything is based on black shit we see in um, space type shit. Um, and she met, just met a, a physicist, I think, or a quantum physicist. Um, and they basically breaking down how like you can talk to dark matter through your mind by basically met like a meditative state focusing and on and you can um, actually communicate with the dark matter or she can mm -hmm. um it's actually some deep shit I'm like oh shit like this show is actually really dope um i have no much more to say about it um it's just really interesting it's on hbo it's called his dark materials I highly recommend y'all checking it out. Um, I love it. The next thing I watched was For Life. It returned for a second season. You guys and girls know I have a problem with this damn show. Uh, what's, wrong, what's wrong with the show again? Uh, you remember he's the lawyer in jail? 
Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Fifty Cent executive producer show, which is not his show. He's just his name on it. Um, What's his brand? You know, it's written by a lot of the Jewish people. Um, That's always when it comes to black shows. Um, the second season um, just started. Um, it's two episodes in. Um, this show is actually doing better now. I don't know if they saw my tweet I did um, to them during the finale when I said, hey, the second season, y'all need to have this man out of jail, or man, I can't watch no hero being locked up, man. Because it's, it's a really good show, great acting, all that stuff. It's just he wins a case, and then he just goes back to jail. Like, that's corny. Like, that's not inspiring or none of that shit. He's back to square one. Right. So the second season literally starts off with him, like, fast-tracking him, basically... Everybody who was basically being a white supremacist in the first uh, season basically has a change of heart <laughs> in the second season. Not, not saying everybody becomes good. It's just everybody sees all the fuck shit. Like, damn, why are we doing all this extra shit? Like, if dude innocent, man, that ain't right. Like, yeah, I, right. I understand if he, like, did it, you know, we just, you know, we, we had to find something to put on him. But dude looks innocent. So leave him, let's leave this man alone. And everybody basically basically found uh, a fall guy. And the fall guy was a dude basically orchestrated the whole, you know, locking dude up. He gets out. Um, he gets a job from this, which is funny because it all started because um, this African businessman, his daughter was in the nightclub. Yeah. Of a nightclub that the main character owned, and she overdosed, and he wanted to get revenge on the person who like gave her the drugs, and he found out it was that nightclub. So he basically put some money on some politician dude's campaign to basically attack the main character's club to say he's a drug dealer, drunk kingpin, and just basically destroyed his life. So now this African dude gonna come back and say, like, hey, I wanna make up for what I did. Here, I'll give you a, I'll give you a job. You can work for me, work for my foundation, and you know, I can solve cases. He's like, nah, dude. I don't wanna sit around and look at you, look at the man who fucked my because he was in jail for nine goddamn years. He ain't getting paid back for that shit. He said he, but he said he'll give him a nice little salary, he'll throw him some bread and shit. It's, it had to be millions, had to be. It had to be, had to be millions, because they why, didn't why show the check. Work? He was like, oh, shit. But he didn't want to really do it, but he said, hey, I'll, I'll take your deal, but on my terms. And he broke down, like, basically, I don't want him to be working in your foundation. I'm going to work for my law, own law firm. Don't give me the money to front that shit. <laughs> like, he basically did all these, like, and the dude was basically was like, all right, I'll do that shit, but first you got to solve this one case for me, and then you can have whatever you want type shit. So he gave him this... Um, uh, envelope, so you got to solve this case. Um, it was really good, though. But the next step is he's trying to get his best friend, who he's in locked up with, out of jail. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's up. Like, because he's in basically doing life in prison for murdering um, his sister's boyfriend because he, you know, like abusive and shit. Mm -hmm. um, but they put another angle on it because he still got the threat name, the threat. Because he he got he got acquitted. Like, so basically, he's, he basically was exonerated. It wasn't true, all that shit. And they, they, but they put him on probation because he like got into a fight when he was in jail, um, which was gangster. Cause like, dude, like basically hit him side of head. And he was like, man, fuck this, man. <laughs> <laughs> he snapped and beat him up. Like, oh yes, thank you. Um, but the show's good. The second season's good. It's only two episodes in. Um, I like the show. Thank God he's out of fucking jail and I can see some real lawyer shit. Um, but yeah, he got a probation officer who's like an asshole. He's like on him all the time. Even the cop dude, because the white dude, like, yeah, this dude is a little slippery motherfucker. You got to watch and stay on him. Like, what? So you want me to trip him up? Because I ain't better do that shit if he ain't do it. He's like, nah, just stay on him, though. And dude on him, like, fucking with him hard. But even the main character, he get in, I'm like, hey, I'm a goddamn lawyer. You're not going to do none of that shit. If I want to talk, because like, he, he works for like criminals, he not work for criminals, but he defends. People who been who in jail, who's going into jail, mm -hmm. and they say, you know, your probation, you can't be around convicts. Like, well, fuck that. I'm a lawyer. I got to be around these convicts. You can't stop me. Like, I, I ain't going to push you for everything, but nigga, when someone I believe in, I'm going to push that shit. I'm like, that's what's up, man. <laughs> yeah, let's have um, some balls to make sure. Yeah, he still got balls. What you, right. what you do, what you want to do is done, mm -hmm. regardless of the law. But that's for life. It's on ABC, um, which is weird. Yeah, but hey. The next thing I watched was um, Small Axis. Um, this is actually, I actually missed a movie that came out Friday. It's a collection of five films that's going to be on Amazon Prime made by, 
shit. I can't remember the dude's name. God damn it. Um, it's this British black director. He's really fucking good. He made this TV show, Gorilla, um, that I really like about um, in the 1980s about this um, this black man rising up. Yeah. Um, this shit was hard. I love the show. But this these five short movies is going to be black, uh, about black empowerment and all that shit. And this first movie is called... Um, shit. <laughs> Drawing a blank. Uh, no, it's name it, um a uh, mangrove. Mangrove. Um, mangrove is about this rest about the true story about this restaurant that kept getting harassed back in like the early late sixties early seventies um, by the cops. The cops just kept fucking with them like this flat just being racist as fuck. Um, and these basically these nine people going trial um, because they like. Basically, the cops are straight for people's lying, saying hey, they sell my drugs out of here. And dude, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, we sell spicy food. You gotta understand, they have like uh, British Haitian accents and shit, so it's hilarious. Not hilarious, <laughs> but I like I like the accents and shit, so it's funny. Like, it's the fucking spicy food. <laughs> it's spicy tuna. <laughs> it's all we selling, and it's just <laughs> a very good and powerful movie. Um, I highly recommend it. I gave it a, a rec- A. It's an A plus all day. It's no it's no boring parts. It actually was. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, the movie was dope. I like it. Um, but they dropping five movies. The second movie just dropped to Friday, every Friday on Amazon Prime. Um, and I was just watching the movie like, these directors can't even make one fucking movie. This man made five. And they, they ain't on 90. These are two hour long movie, nigga. Like, nigga. Like full length movies. Full length movies about black empowerment. In the, in the UK, but still black empowerment. Um, and these motherfuckers, Tyler Perry been dropping bullshit. We need quality, nigga. Come on now. Stop fucking us up with the bullshit. You can't make one hardcore, raw black movie with all the money you got. For all the talent he knows. Fuck Damn, out of here. He's doing that lower common denominator bullshit. Why is it taking motherfuckers from the UK to produce great black empowerment films? Mm-hmm. But he can't. Damn shame. But, um... Hey, the normal shit, though. The normal shit, man, so... It's in the, you know, the high intelligence stuff. That, that's how it be. Um, the next thing I watched was... Animaniacs! Oh, shit, you finish it? Um, I didn't finish the season. I watched... I rewatched the, uh, basically, where I slept <laughs> when sleeping. <laughs> Don't feel bad, I was going to pass out. Animaniacs, too. But I watched the first... Two or maybe maybe three episodes. Chandi, um, what was the first three episodes? Like I know the first one. The first one. Oh I mean, yeah. You remember? Okay, it's been twenty years. We had to get with the time. I, I couldn't even remember. I mean, you, it's just, it's like trying to remember a SpongeBob episode. Yeah. Like, come on, like it's a cartoon, literally a cartoon. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, well, I think the main point of the episode one was uh, damn. Yeah, let's talk about episode one. How yeah. about that? We'll stick to one. Rock, rack, racko, wacko. Uh, wacko, yacko, uh, and dot. Yeah. Uh huh. Basically, the uh, Animaniacs returned, uh, but for some reason they went to Hulu. <laughs> they had the most money, they said, so they we went to Hulu. <laughs> and that one on Warner Brothers, Warner right. Brothers right. own streaming services. Right, you could have went to HBO Max. <laughs> yeah, my, that's on my uh, Warner Brothers. Right, <laughs> it's weird, but hey, Hulu must have made a deal before yeah. all that stuff happened. Um, I loved it. The first step, first. A couple episodes I watched was great. Uh, they really came in strong. They really was basically making fun of um, fanboys. Because they knew how fanboys were going to be when they watched this show. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah, they told the one concerned guy, hey, dude, meet the screen, the a cop, hey, dude, make sure your first line is impactful so these fanboys in this chose won't get on our asses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just, that was just brilliant. Um, they, uh, they start off with uh, Steven Spielberg, in it, <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, I, I brought back Animaniacs. They're coming back and stuff. Yeah, we're also bringing back picking their brain, Tiny. And they're like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. So we're bringing that back. So everyone just like worshipped them and loved them. They finally back, but they gotta understand times are different now. Like uh, when they got there, you're like, damn, like they missed a lot. Warner Brothers is way different from what it was back in the day. Like DC movies, Harry Potter, all that stuff wasn't around when Animaniacs came on. No. So now they are, and they just they show them smacking them upside the head like fuck Batman, fuck Harry <laughs> Potter. Uh, we just want the Warner Brothers logo. That's all we want. Um, they get there, 
uh, Wacko uh, has an old sandwich from the fucking 19, from 1998 or some shit. He eats, he eats it. it all moldy and watson and shit. Uh, <laughs> um, Motherfucker was there a whole bunch of Olympic-style gymnastics mm-hmm. to dodge a whole bunch of lasers mm-hmm. just to eat a sandwich. Uh, I know in episode two, that I think it was episode two or, or episode one, where they did the song about what, what is a reboot, remake, and all that stuff. That was episode two. And it was breaking down like, yeah, motherfuckers are uh, um, well, out of ideas in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> so ideas, you know. The classics. You know? And then they show them, like, writing a sign on a contract for two seasons and shit. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know, making jazz with the old 90s shows, getting me with, like, uh, Merle Place. Mm-hmm. The animation is actually beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. It's amazing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, why the fuck? <laughs> and, they, and I love how they did, like, a Trump joke. And it was like, well, actually, we don't know if Trump's going to be in office. We wrote this, like, two years ago. So we're just going to predict some more shit. Um, <laughs> Adam bomb hits the ground. And then we jump and fly. <laughs> like, they just making it all shit. Like, we don't know. Shit, we just know. Shit. <laughs> uh, so the, the, it was great. I love Animaniacs. I love Warner Brothers. Even when I was a kid, I don't know, I didn't understand why people love fucking Disney so much. Like Looney Tunes should be just as big as Disney for real, but they just don't use them as much because it's, it's no. Well, the later later Looney Tunes stuff is more character depth, but you don't have really character. I, mean, I don't care to depth in Disney, Mickey Mouse and shit. <laughs> fuck I'm talking like, about. What what character? Kind of, uh, what kind right. of grow? Fuck, fuck I'm talking about. Not um, even Kingdom Hearts. They grow like. I wish they utilized these characters more. Like they, I know they do, but I wish it was just, just as big as Disney. I, I really, I like Looney Tunes more because I like Bugs Bunny with a gun. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna see Mickey with a damn gun. Come on, it's gonna be a water pistol. gun, right? It's gonna be a water gun. You ain't gonna see no shit like that. Come on, man. Shit, I like that these cartoons can be gangster. Okay. Um, the next thing I watched was. Well, that's the final thing I watched. Um, Onyx Equinox. I think, is it the oh, South American? This is a cartoon. Crunchyroll of the original. This show is dark as fuck. They literally start off with, hey, this looked like a kid's cartoon, but this is not a kid's cartoon. Don't watch this with kids. Said, this is disturbing images. Nigga, they start... They literally start the show off with like human sacrifices and shit. I'm like, whoa. Jesus. Like in this animated, like um, like Avatar looks so fucking good. You're like, this is sad. And it's dubbed. So that's just showing the person gets stabbed and yes. out the yes. heart out yes. of the body. Yes, 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 yes. And they gave shout outs to the old mix. I'm like, see? I'm like, this is a black show, man. Yeah, because the characters are black. No, they're Native American. They're it's like Aztecs, um, Aztecs and uh, what was the Aztecs and Mayans? It's that shit, but they're black. Yeah, they're I mean, black. they they it's made by Hispanic motherfuckers. They got African features, but it's in it's dubbed, and I say it's so good. Okay, what is Onyx Equinox about? It's about this young boy, a young girl. They keep all two characters. Um, and it's during this sacrifice, this girl, um, his sister, um, basically finds out that her, her brother, her younger brother is about to get sacrificed because they need like a virgin bird killer kill to please the gods and shit. But some shit happens and because I don't really want to spoil it. It's so good. It's only one episode out. Actually, episode two, two, cool. episode two should be out today or tomorrow. But, um, shit happens. Don't the right way, and basically all the gods of like Mayan or Aztec religion, they come together and say, "Hey, we're gonna destroy the world um, unless you can get like, uh, we ain't nothing gonna stop us." And one of the demons is like, "Well, no, you should believe in humans. Humans are the shit. They can be very, um, you know, uh, quick thinking or whatever to get shit done. So how about this? I bet this I can make any low level ass human." Uh, defeat Ja with no problem, and if if they they do they win, you can't destroy the world. It's like okay, but it was tight because like all these spirits like possess dead bodies, and as they controlled the bodies, the bodies kept decaying into yeah. the like. It's like all right, well I'll see y'all later, and then like the whole body just disintegrates away. It's, it's so fucking dope the animation. Oh man, I, I can't wait to watch more. I, I just can't believe it was dubbed and it was dark. I was like, damn, this is a, this looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. No. Fucking bullshit, but this show, goddamn, like it's, sh- it's shocking. I can't wait to see more of this fucking show. Um, 
It's Crunchyroll original though. Check it out. Um, and that's all I got. I I only got three things to talk about today. Okay. First thing, Talented Nada episode eight. Mm-hmm. So this episode, Nada kills the those um fuck. What do they call them? Girls who tan. Girls who tan. Yeah, in Japan, and they got like blonde hair, the blue eyes, shit like that. I don't know. Oh, I think they got gang ain't girl, gang girl. I ain't, know, I ain't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. So yeah. Nana kills uh, Habu and Kaori after she after she defeats Yuka. So pretty much, Nana finds Habu in the woods after killing Yuka. Nana talent is venom slash toxin, and the way she produces toxin is that she has to eat poisonous animals like snakes, frogs, and lizards to gain her power. Mm. So they're talking they're talking shit, you know. No, 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 no. Um, Harbour was like, yeah, you know, there's more talent in, you know, in the bedroom if Josh got row. And I was like, okay, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Mm-hmm. And Harbour was like, what she, what she do out here this um, early? And I was like, yeah, no, I actually came back for um, fucking guy myself. <laughs> and it's like, right. I was, I was like, shocked by that. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, I thought you was a sweet little girl, but you were a little freak yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's all I played. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'll have my outside. Mm-hmm. So... Habu brings out that Corey, her homegirl, and Habu had a fight over some contacts. Mm-hmm. So Nada gets a sick idea to kill Habu, but blame Kaori. So Kaori, the white hair boy, can get off her ass by her killings. Mm-hmm. So as Habu talking to about Corey, Habu, not Habu, uh, Nada pulls off a needle, stabs her to death, pins her down, and was like, hey, if you give me the antidote, I mean, if you give me your password for your phone, I will give you the antidote. So the girl, she's, she's fucking dying. She's like, three, three, two, one, eight. That's the password. Give me the antidote. And, and I was like, thank you. She, and she goes open her hands like, alive, bitch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell? And she goes, dies. Mm. So. Man, she was cutthroat. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I didn't want to kill her, but you know, I can't have. Perfect opportunity, though. Yeah, can't have, no, everybody find out that I'm the killer. Mm-hmm. So what she does also kind of gains her. So most of the zombies hadn't yet to dissolve because Yuka, when she dies, all the zombies dissolve. But there were some zombies who have the zombie there. So what she did was took a boy's clothes off the zombie and put them on Habu's body. Mm-hmm. So Habu, not nah, Habu, she's dead. So she don't care anymore. Not a, it kind of is Koyaka. And the rest of class. So she tells Sarah about you know how Yuka killed herself because she could not have caught me for bad about Yuka killing Sinji and bringing him back to life. So she asked Fireboy, hey, burn all these bodies. Mm-hmm. Kyoya was like, why you want to kill the why, why you want to uh, destroy the bodies? Why can't you just take the bodies back and put it in the morgue? But I was like, no, just burn, burn the bodies. So they burn the bodies. But Kyoka's it's kind of suspect. Like, why would she want to cut the bodies if these are the remains of kid, dead kids who were? Do you want to expect them real quick before we burn them? Yeah, uh, and, and so he actually asked him, like, "Do you want to expect them real quick?" Man, he's like, "Nah, nah." Hmm. So he, that actually makes him more suspect, Nana. Because why the fuck would you ask somebody to burn the bodies? Me, I'm ask hearing their spirits. They're they're dying. They need <laughs> to be put. Like, oh my god. Like this girl, girl like. <laughs> Okay. I can hear their souls. They're, they're, they're begging. You have to burn their bodies. The one thing I give these people who say, if they make a live action in this, we got to make that a dingy white girl. You got to yeah, make that into a white girl. You got to make her into a white girl. Yeah. Bro, that'd be dope. <laughs> like a white girl killing a bunch of niggas. That'd be that'd, niggas with powers and yeah. shit. Ooh, that actually be a good spin on Talonless Nana. Like, have like an all black school with like black people with like powers and mm-hmm. shit. And then this one white girl who can read minds start killing off, um, you know. The, the black superheroes. Yeah. That'd be a, a that'd really be dope. That'd be a dope show. All the black superheroes like team t- must be like Kanana. Uh, and they have Kyohei, you know, uh, the black, the, like, got a real black alpha male dude. Yeah. But have him, like you said, have him as a super nerd and shit. That'd be so dope, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, just adding black people make it dope. It, it will make it dope. <laughs> yeah. So, Nana, 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 Kyoya gets even more suspicious of him, uh, Nana. But he plays a little kind of nice game with her. So, what she does. Mm-hmm. So they go to Kaori's Carrie's room because one students discover her body. So she got killed because not before they went 
before Nada met the rest of the class, she had ran over to Courtney's room and poisoned her contact needle, not contact, poison her needles, uh, not needles, poison her contact case mm-hmm. in hopes that she will put the contacts in her eyes and poison her, which mm-hmm. it does work. Now, Kiyo was like, okay, Nana, how do you not know that what's the face were contacts if you can be mine? Mm-hmm. So this starts to hint that Kiyoya is starting to realize that maybe Nana is bullshit by her powers mm-hmm. and that she might have some other powers or that she may not have any powers. Mm-hmm. So, man, let me read my notes. So Nana, she started to explain herself, you know, yeah, I, I didn't know, and like I actually been to her room before. Mm-hmm. Now, when she say that, that she never been to her room before, she catches herself. She's like, oh shit, I could so lie. Mm-hmm. Because she actually had been to her room to tell Kaori not to bully Bichiru. Mm-hmm. And now, what's his face like? Are you telling the truth? And he's like, what's in your pocket? Because we somebody asked that because while they were looking over her body, Kaori's body, her phone's gone. Her phone's gone. Mm-hmm. And she got a text message from Habu. Mm-hmm. Now Kiori was like, okay, how the hell can she send a text message to you and yeah, she's dead? Mm-hmm. And she asked, not again, hey kid, what's in your pockets? I bet you that's a I bet you that's her phone in your pocket. Mm-hmm. So you can create an alibi about your crimes. Mm-hmm. And now they just got this dreadful look on her face. Like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that, the, the best part is when he like, hey, everybody come with this motherfucker. Like, what's going on? Like, uh, man, um, she, he keep uh, accusing Nana on the little white little oh, blind hair. Yeah, she's the, like, oh, he keep girl. accusing Nana. Uh, and he's like, no. No. Flat out, man, she lying. I'm going to tell you how she lying. He just start breaking it down like some case clothes. She's yeah. like, oh, shit. Girl, you caught you caught so, <laughs> that phone in your pocket, girl. You fuck. You fuck. I can't wait. So all you motherfuckers. Oh, that's sexy to the, tomorrow's episode. Yeah, so all you motherfuckers, all, all you motherfuckers saying, man, this got plot armor. All this got plot armor. No, but it's, it's called. He has to prove her right, guilty. Prove, right. Beyond a uh, no uh, doubt. It, it, that's it, not, even that's not plot armor. You retards. Even he's assu- he's assuming he has no definitive evidence that shows that she did whatever she did. He has no evidence. Well, it could be one evidence if the old girl ever met about the picture shit. Yeah. But that's the only thing. Like, it's no, he, he can't just accuse somebody of some shit. For real. And all Nana can do is like, what are you doing to me? You're bullying me. Everybody's like, hey, man, leave her alone, man. So, she playing it perfect. Yes, she, she playing, playing perfect. that part, role perfectly. So, I wonder how she's going to get out of this. If the phone's in her pocket. Or maybe it's not in her pocket. Right. Who knows? Maybe it's in his pocket. <laughs> maybe she paid off Michio to um, cover her crimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe she was maybe maybe but she was not as dumb as she was on on to be. And maybe she was is kind of sneaky. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's uh it for Tatanata, the show. Don't listen to the haters for the saying the fucking retarded. You can't actually use the Waco side to I love that watch show. anime, so for real. Don't listen to the haters. Last thing I watched was Bochiachi the Patriot. So the overview of this episode was um Bliss. As you know from the last episode, he murdered a commoner who was murdered who was actually a pawn for what you actually planned to expose for nobles to the world. So, Mogachi spots his body, the, his pawn's body, and was like, oh, dear, what is this? And Bliss was like, it's not what you look like. He tried to attack me, he's a thief. Mm-hmm. Mogachi knows Mogachi being smart as he is, was like, look around the room, he's like, I don't see any sign of struggles in your room. Mm-hmm. And you don't have a defenses rooms on your body. Mm-hmm. Also, that knife looks too perfect for <laughs> too expensive, hammer. right? That nigga had a dragon, like some RC, some RC, I mean, RC, four C art. Well, shit. well, well. Do you, uh, I don't know if you talked about it um, for part one, but they they built it up. They yeah. they, they they built the rage in them to make them snap. Yeah, because after they kept, kept okay, cause, yeah, because yeah, they, they kept fucking him. Like um, he gets a note from his homeland that his house got burned down. Mm-hmm. And somebody that he knew got connected to some shit that would hurt him. Mm-hmm. And also, he was also pissed that there was a whole bunch of commoners on a ship that was designed for um, But this is, no, this is Noah's Ark. <laughs> yeah, like, this is, like, we're as noble men were chosen as gods to be on his ark. He was not this dirty, scummy, demonic noble man. Me, common man. He sounded like white supremacist. I'm like, boy, this boy was psychotic. 
He is. I think he's a white supremacist. He, he can vote yeah, like one. Hell yeah. Hell like yeah. I, he has. He has his own land where he doesn't hunt animals. He hunts humans. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of the comments are comments. Um, the Noah man actually missed that. They hear a rumor that hey, this guy a man has some bodies on him. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, Bliss tried to bullshit his way out of the thing. And but but him. even uh, Moriarty brought up the commoner that he killed. Yeah. He like, hey, man, you come on here. But, like, man, fuck this dude, though. He uh, rapes women and kidnaps children and all type of shit. So he, he's just a perfect pawn to be killed in this shit. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, they actually got his body and told him, oh, boy, oh, boy. But like, it cuts to a scene where his homeboys mm -hmm. actually catch the body. And Bliss, it's all happy thing. He won the battle. Mm -hmm. So... They go to a by the window performance thingy. Ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> Ballet, whatever. <laughs> so Mocha actually hits up Bliss and like, hey dude, are you sure we killed that dude? I mean, are you sure you killed him? And Bliss is like, yeah, I'm sure I killed him. Then he gives him some binoculars, like, look straight ahead, uh, look about four rows to the front, look three seats to the east, I mean to the left, mm. and you're gonna see him. So he gets the binoculars, and he starts freaking the fuck out. I'm like, no, I know I killed him. I know I, I killed a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So he throws it out to the, um, oh, fuck, the audience. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, you see this motherfucker who's sitting right there? I'll pay you money. No, I'll pay you money. <laughs> and Kyle was like, yeah, he went that way to the back. Right, so, me, Bliss, so Bliss rushes to the back mm -hmm. and sees the body of the guy he killed. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he walks up the body. He's like, I'm going to make sure he's dead. I'm going to kill him so well. That he's not gonna come back to life. Mm. So he takes a knife out of the body, so stabbing the body again, again, again. Mm. And as he's stabbing the body, Albert hits up Morati and was like, hey, he's on the stage. Do your thing. So Morati's little brother hits a button, and as the uh, fucked up guy stabs the body, he does not notice he's he watches the stage mm -hmm. until it's too late. Everybody says he's inside his body. And Bliss goes go insane. He's like, fuck you guys. How dare you mock me? How dare you just me for killing this fucking trash? You noble man always talk shit about these common, mm. common trash. Yeah, but we won't kill him. Yeah, like, well, yeah, we can't really think of trash. We're not the fucking tackle pass. Mm. We're not out here killing these commoners. Mm. Then he goes with nuts. He... Like, he, really? And he started about to attack the audience. Yeah, and then show like fucking does some Carperado shit mm -hmm. and fucking dry, dry house kick his ass. Mm -hmm. Then Bless, while his day is tired to hide somewhere, but he can't, he realized he can't hide, so he climbs this pillar and it was like an all shit. It was like, fuck you guys, I am a god. You mm -hmm. have to look up to me <laughs> while I look down on you. And I talk shit, I brought homeboy, the military guy. Cash is not stopping his speed, right? Mm -hmm. And Bliss like, help me, Morati. And Morati goes look at him with a sick ass smile on his face. He's like, ah, uh, it was him. Yeah, he realized like he got set up. Mm. So after that, um, it's a few days later. It's a few days it later. A, it was a perfect crime. Yeah, it was a few days later. Um, not a few days later. It yeah, was... it was like like because they got off the ship. And, um, they are back home. Okay. And they're talking right. about like, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sherlock confronting Morati. Mm -hmm. So, so during the chaos, you see Sherlock checking the body of the thief, mm -hmm. and he asks, he's grabbed his hand. He goes, for some reason, he goes touching the hand, like, nice. ah, this is this is this is this is curious as fuck. Look, this dude been dead for about like three, like half a hours. day. Like like I'm like Rick and Mortis. Like Rick and Mortis. Like yeah, it's a French thing. See, yeah. all y'all England, y'all way y'all England, y'all fuck me high. Like shit, more y'all like shit. Damn, I am only in England type shit. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, like I check his body, like he had Rick and Mortis, his rank, his body was still stiff, mm -hmm. like the blood like, was why, not fresh. Like why would oh, well, go ahead, sorry. I mean, I'm finished with the um how he No, no, I mean, body, when Sherlock confronted him, he was at yeah. the part. No, he was at no, the no, he was no when Sherlock confronted, he was at the um docks. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that's, he was at the part. Yeah, I always said the part. Are you done? Yeah, cause I can say I can say, I can say it, like Sherlock check the body and realize the no, I'm talking about when he confronted Moriarty at the docks and he basically told him, like, hey, man. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, the person was like, why would he stab somebody when the body had been dead? He was basically breaking down, like, dude's suspicious. And Moriarty like, fuck, man, this dude's on every damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, y'all think someone set him up type shit to make him think his dude was alive, but who would do something like, like that? that? 
You know, he, he, once again, just a suspicion though, so you can't yeah. do nothing about it. But reasonable, like, if you got definitive proof, um, it's gonna be a good cat and mouse. Though. Yeah, like like I'm liking all this cat and mouse. Oh yeah, and this this, this next year. episode, this um month, um, uh, then he went and told his friends, um, like, hey, we're gonna have to do something about uh Sherlock, Sherlock cuz. And then the next episode of preview is like, yeah, we're gonna have to give him a little game to play. I'm like, oh, they're gonna kill somebody and see if he can solve it or some shit. Yeah. It's gonna be dope. I can't wait. Oh, oh I can't wait. I'm waiting. Oh, oh, I'm waiting for uh, March Oh hell yeah. Fuck, yeah, you. fuck, fuck Sherlock. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. No, no, you can't do my man. <laughs> fuck the goody two shoes shit. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on more Sherlock's not goody two shoes. He is not goody two shoes. <laughs> not, I mean, he's, 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 he's not as good as he's not as cruel as Morati. Yeah, yeah, because he's not a cruel person, but he, he ain't no goody two shoes now. Oh, shit. He does he does heroin. That's badass. <laughs> <laughs> my, my heroes do drugs. <laughs> don't tell the um English lick teacher that. <laughs> they don't work. Why why you watching, why you start reading so like oh I guess he guess he smoke cracks <laughs> in heroin. He, he does heroin, he does smoke cigarettes. Remember that's what Moriarty get, came up on like yeah, yeah I huh. smell a little bit of chemicals on you too. Like, ooh, <laughs> you, you know you make that you making that shit, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> at first I thought come my dumbest dog was talking about cigarettes, I was like, no, it's like chemicals. Like, yeah, oh, can, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I like that was Sherlock because hey, yeah, I smell the chemicals on you. I smell chemicals, yeah, chemicals on you. And yeah, Sherlock was, oh shit, this nigga know about mama. Habit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's do the beast. Um, that's all you got? Yep. All right. Uh, if this is your first time listening, we usually do another segment called News Stories. You have any? Nope. Me either. So we don't have no news story. So our next segment is our topic, and it is applying knowledge and using it. Um, I just want to talk about that for a little bit. Um, I noticed um, a lot of people don't want to actually research things. Me and Yugi, I, I'm really, I'm going to go to like an example. Me and Yugi was watching this video. Uh, um, Akihabara Geeks. Yeah, uh, Geeks and Akihabara. No, it was uh, Akihabara Geeks. Uh, Akihabara Geeks. Yeah. That's what it's called? Yeah. Okay. It's free on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. We'll leave it out in the description below. Everything we say will be out in the description below. But um, we were watching that and they was looking up the narrator and it was a woman. And I was like, man, who is this woman? Because we're like, she sounds so familiar. So we looked her up, couldn't find nothing about her. But then it led us to a oh, Oxford no. paper and then breaking down the tr- the the latest what is a being a taku and what a, what about it. And it's all about them like basically really breaking down like I don't know how many like, pages, hundreds of pages breakdown on what is an otaku and yeah, what's the like, trend like going 300, on. Like 400 pages. Like, yeah. And I was like, damn, man, it's crazy. Like, and I'm like, and I, I was just looking, I looked at you, like, man, you see? And we started off looking up some bitch we don't give a fuck I about. Like, <laughs> like, this got started because you, you get out over some <laughs> like a Aki Harbor type of shit. Yeah, and it led to that. And now we got a bigger insight on what it is to be like a nerd. Because uh, I didn't read that whole fucking Oxford thing, but yeah. I read a few few things of it. And um, it's been much like how otakus in Japan see themselves as nomads because they just wander around life doing their own thing mm-hmm. without any established rules. Mm-hmm. Just like nomads themselves, they leave one spot, travel months on end yeah. for a whole new spot. Yeah, that's the word they kept using on when nomad, called them nomads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you think about that, that's why a lot of anime fans are. They get hooked into one new big anime or video game, mm-hmm. and when they're done with that, they move on to the next big thing. Mm-hmm. And stay there for a few months. See, I thought they meant by nomad is like, um, like they basically what I talk about is they stay to themselves, they yeah. talk to nobody, and they go in there. That's their own path is doing that. So I thought that was very uh, interesting. Just seeing like, wow, like being a nerd, like it is what being, it is like doing your own thing, right? And you're not trying to like be like everyone else. Yeah, you're not trying to be uh, part of society. You want to be away from you. You want to be further away you can from society. Yeah. People like the 2D world. Like like, like the boy Walker from uh, <laughs> the Ride and I. <laughs> or the boy from uh, Welcome to the NHK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But how I always say things when I was a kid is just looking up things, man. Yeah. I don't understand like people think I'm like knowledgeable about things, which I am. It is the whole point. Is I look up stuff, man. Me too. It's like all I do is research and cross reference my research. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm that's, all, for, that's all you gotta do. And and it's so much information I heard. Like, um, like it was like it was one time when I was like, I was looking up like I was looking up like a bunch of homosexual stuff. Like, what 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 it, like what was the beginning of all this? Like, what were people like were saying about it? And like, what what is like the state of it today? I did so much research on finding out where all that stuff come from. And newsflash, white folks um, <laughs> <laughs> come from that shit. Um, and I, I I listened to like uh, gay people being converted uh, from like not being gay to being straight, and then gay people being gay, and a lot of this is the trans people. I, I I'm like you know I'm gonna really want to understand all this stuff. So when I'm talking my shit, <laughs> I'm not an asshole. I'm like oh well I know what fuck I'm talking about. Like when I say the whole um um gay sex ain't good for you, but um like in the last episode, the last truth tellers. Uh, Louis C.K. did the joke perfectly uh, that I, I, I was trying to say in a, I don't know, it might have been a bad way. Like, the two-bucket thing. Like, they ain't accomplished nothing with two buckets. Like, <laughs> 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 that's a perfect analogy of that shit. Like, nothing's being done, and that's what I mean by, like, being homosexual is just sex. It truly is. All this, you only focus on sex. You can't procreate. The whole point of procreation, the whole point of sex is procreation. That's the real shit about it. You shouldn't just be fucking. You shouldn't be fucking to produce. <laughs> so right. I, need, I, I need to stop putting it out. Why not? <laughs> you just just go ahead and not hurry and produce kids. <laughs> no, that's, if you, that's if you want. That's if you want. But that's what sex is really made for. That's why a lot of religions um, don't allow masturbation because that is the truth. Like, your your seed is meant for <laughs> planting, not in a sock or a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get these on. No, 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 on us. <laughs> uh, no for help. <laughs> save your seed. You save your seed. Energy. All right. Don't waste it. Um, I mean, it's even real shit. Um, you heard about boxers like not having sex before fights. Yeah, like shit. my Tyson, you not jerk like, off or have sex for yeah, five years because because like but. You do lose a little bit of your energy and not spirit, but you lose you lose a little bit of yourself when you do stuff like that over and over and constantly yeah. type shit. So just just learning stuff like that, just understanding like other perspectives. Um, like I, I when people recommend something, like okay, I'll check it out. Music, all that shit, I'll check you, I'll check you out. I might like love it or even keep fucking with it, but I'll give it a chance to yeah. check and and listen to it, rock with it. Um, when I want to learn about like uh, business stuff, I listen to business people. Like I list all types of business people: white, black, Asian, whatever. It's matter, that's all. I get the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, what was like, the the Bruce Lee quote? Is um, with inf- like information. Um, you eat. take all you what you take all what you need. Take out I me. Mean, take in all eat. you need. Take out what you don't need, and combine it to and yeah, and combine with chicken to <laughs> noon. <laughs> no, chicken, you know, chicken like information is you eat all the meat and bone with a bone. You don't have to eat the bone too. <laughs> like, that was a Bruce Lee quote. I think it was a Bruce Lee. Yeah. No, he was no. It was it was. You take everything like you need, mm-hmm. and you take out what you don't need. That's the chicken thing. That's the whole mean by the chicken. That's the chicken analogy thing. Oh. That's why I basically broke it down like okay, that. Okay, okay. I didn't. Yeah, I never yeah, knew yeah. that was. That's I never like, knew that was that. You eat the chicken, get the the, the meat for the sustenance. You don't have to eat the damn bone. Shit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could use a bone to like make stock. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> he did say use everything you, like you need. Yeah, true. Um, but I mean, I, I try to inform myself on a whole bunch of things, just trying to be knowledgeable as much as I possibly can, so I can at least pass it down to other people. Um, I, I will hope I do pass that along. The things I brought up in this podcast, that like, oh shit, I didn't know that about that. Like, damn. Um, Me too. We want to find more interesting people um, to break up more information in. Um, I never think you should stay in your comfort zone. I think you should be trying to listen to other people and fuck with other shit that you never fuck with. Now, if you know these people are notoriously being on some fuck shit, don't fuck with yeah, them. Yeah, like, you're not saying. I go saying. listen to everyone, but right, right. at least. Like, well, you say I can listen to anything. Well, I'm going to listen to Vlad again. Like, no, <laughs> no. ain't saying that shit. You know, he's part, you know, part of some fuck shit. Don't be, don't be part of the contribute. Contribution? The contribute of, you know, getting this dude money, like, Fuck that dude. No. Yeah. But I always try to like read books and read articles and just try to keep myself just up to date. You, you have to be up to date with the things that's going on in the world. I, I mean, you can not only so swirl around, you know, um, uh, uh, like Lipstick Alley, Boston. <laughs> no, this, 
all who, these gossip, this rice, gossip bullshit. Who just put our toxic out in the universe, and right. not actually put anything good right. for people to learn and grow with. And all you, all these people know is about uh, who Meg the Stallion is doing, Dating. and like, fuck, man, y'all. Or, what, or who's Cardi B beefing with? Or what sports athlete did a field goal <laughs> last night? Like, you like, should know more than that. Like, well, how is that helping you? You're not even trying to help yourself. Unless you're like a sports writer, that's not going to help you. Or you got a sports podcast, I can see you looking that kind of shit up. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's not helping you out. You could say the same with me. Like, I could, you could say, well, you always spend yours look up fucking anime shit, but I actually use that for my own shit. Mm-hmm. Right. And just being useless knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my TV information, like, I, I, I know all that shit because I know. I, I like shit, and also I think a lot of people don't know how TV works. A lot of people yeah. think TV is this certain way. I'm like, no, it's actually no. some other way, and it actually can be propaganda all day. Like a lot of people don't understand. Like these corporate motherfuckers can really push some shit. And they want to. And some TV shows and movies. Like, man, why? Well, like it's not a coincidence. That black people keep complaining about gay shit. And I'm like, why? In every one of our shit, when y'all say it's for black folks, well, some gay, gay shit, shit in it. Why can't put the gay shit in y'all right in y'all right shows? Right, cause y'all don't put it in y'all shows. It, I can you can name many shows where ain't no gay white shit in none of it. <laughs> but you got a gay person having crazy ass bus sex with right. a gay person on a show about the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that has nothing to do with black empowerment or black culture in general. Because mm-hmm. you want have your little fetish because because the, you know because they because how white liberal minds they they think. Is like putting some gay shit in there that's like, oh, well, that's a double minority thing. That's a, because now gay people can understand what it is to be discriminated against. If they see a gay black person, see, he, he, he gotta, gotta be, he gotta be secretive even in the black community because blacks don't even like, like get the fuck out of with this here. shit. Don't project your fucking racism on our shit. And that's why I love the fourth season, the fourth season of Fargo, man, because they don't got none of that fuck shit in there. Not a goddamn thing. They actually talk, talking about how, Black people, we can't even be organized crime. We can't even be gangsters for real because white people try to drag you down to be fucking nasty, cutthroat motherfuckers like them. Like, straight up. And that, that's really fucked up. And they even reference in the show that, like, white people come here who, no, they're not white. They're, like, Italian. Well, they are white. You know what they're I mean? White. Like, they're, they're Italian or they're Irish or some shit, and they, they come to America, and they get on code. And that's what Chris Rock had to tell them. Like, hey... I know it might feel the same, you know, shitting on us with your head on our neck, because you see other white people on our, our heads on our necks, but no, nigga. Um, <laughs> you just as like us, motherfucker. No, they don't like your fucking Italian ass, Irish ass either. They can use you to build a number of those <laughs> shit. And when they get done with you, they want you to treat you like us. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Like, man, people just be calling us that. But we need more people like on cold because I notice uh, I see a lot of things like in the um, 1950s and 60s. Um, they always show black people on cold. Mm-hmm. Actually, that when I was um, I was talking to Yuki earlier, I was talking. I was at like a Thanksgiving like party thing, and I was I showed them this video of these old older black people in like 1940s and doing music. And the older gentleman, I think he was like in the 70s. He was like, "See, we used to dress a suit and tie. We used to dress professional. Like, yeah, cause y'all have respect for each other, and y'all knew who the enemy was back then. Nowadays, motherfuckers, they get some white pussy. They fucking fuck all this shit. Yeah, war it, with the own people. Like, it's it's freaking sad seeing like black people in this state, state doing shit like this. Like, it's, I just read a uh, tra- treater, uh, tweeter, treat whatever. <laughs> Same shit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how we f- keep fucking like, like, like we we will turn to comedians to give us our philosophy. Yeah, like yeah. So this woman ain't just uh she made a comment saying black people can't hold water for nothing. There's nothing wrong with just keeping things between us, our people. Mm-hmm. Like how we just fucking tell. I saw this our whole business. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because they're trying to make white people feel bad, so they'll tell. Them everything, but you know, y'all smell like white fuck. Y'all smell like wet dog. God damn, we can't keep shit. No, fuck. I'm like, cause a lot of people, white people don't know that shit. <laughs> 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 like, what we smell? Yes, yes, you smell. You smell like sulfur and wet dog. <laughs> shit, goddamn, the fuck. And everybody hate that smell. That's like the worst smell. Everyone, everyone, everyone hates that wet dog. Out, we call it outside. That's outside what you gotta smell. call. It. <laughs> it's that outside smell. <laughs> Uh, type of shit, but yeah, it's a TV show. Blackish, they do no fuck shit like that. They, they, nigga, they gave all our secrets up on that show. I mean, every nigga, everything. I'm like, 
fuck. I mean, it's cool the idea of the nod, you know. That that's pretty much universal anyway. But they go deep into the shit. Like fuck, y'all don't, man. Y'all, give y'all a don't fuck. give a fuck. Y'all give a fuck just to get a fucking episode. Just um, to get some ratings. All right, just to get an episode. No, just to get an episode. <laughs> I mean, we need a topic. Um, well, let's talk about why black people uh like uh chitlins or some shit. You know. <laughs> Hey, fucking God, y'all niggas ain't shit. Um, but I try to educate myself as much as I possibly can. I do it every single day. Um, that's all you can do. I mean, I can, you can get in the test. I mean, we watch all type of shit, for real. And I remember one day, I was chilling with uh, my wife and her sister, and we went, we watched, uh, uh, we watched a... It, we watched like four videos. One video was about the China uh, using their um, their basic money in America to buy farmland. And our, I'm like, see, that's economics right there. We got that. And then we watched something about science or some shit. Then we watched something about the origins or some shit. Like um, some about history. We basically watched like four videos of different type of subjects. And, I, and we went back to the history because she's like, oh man, I wanted to see all these videos again. Like, you know, send me, send them to me. Yeah. And I was like, see, like we just watched four different type of topics, learning about different things. And now you can use that shit. Now you know about like, you know, things going on in the world type shit without even trying. And then these videos was like 30, 40 fucking minutes long. It was like less than eight minutes or some shit. Um, it just, just a, it's a small watching something or uh, learning about something. It takes no fucking time. And some people just don't even want to even open their mind to certain things. They just want to stick to just smoking, drinking, partying. Fucking. Like, y'all don't even want to think Learn. about something new. For real. Y'all don't even want to even know that because, like, who, who cares about that? It's always niggas get mad. Man, they ain't put no money in my pocket. I don't care. But you do care about Cardi B fucking somebody, though. Okay. Ooh, and that's not like putting money in your pocket. Right. Uh, that's like the biggest excuse when you, when niggas um, don't know nothing. Uh, well, they ain't put no money in my pocket. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> like, all I mean, right. I mean, implying you have money in your pocket in the first place, but okay. <laughs> you ain't put no money in my pocket. Basically, that has nothing to do with me. So I, I'm focused on this money. But, well, nigga, you don't got the money anyway. And you can learn this shit about getting the money. You have to learn stuff without outside in the outside world. Really yeah, shit, that can, that, can even make, that can give you even, yeah, that can give you even more money, but you can be ignorant and be proud of your ignorance. Yes, proud of ignorance, man. That's it's actually a damn shame. shame. <laughs> damn shame. Uh, if you're proud of your ignorance, you need, you need to kill yourself. You need to kill yourself. Shit, that's why I try to stay to myself mostly, man. I don't even try to talk to many people because, like, a lot of people Same. just ain't on shit, for real. If everybody right, just want to talk with the... I mean, okay, I play video games, watch anime, but that's not the only thing, thing I, I do. do. I like that's the only thing I know. <laughs> shit, I don't give two shits about gaming, anime. If, if I had to talk about anything else, I'd rather talk about something else other than gaming and anime. Yeah. If I had any other choice. <laughs> and these fucking gamers and the they get so mad when people say they don't give a fuck about gaming or anime shit. Mm-hmm. They just want to do other things outside those realms. Mm-hmm. Like, man, let's talk about making a game. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Producing one? Right. All right, producing one? How about that? How about we find somebody on Fiverr who makes video games? We'll pay, we'll, we'll all come together and get $500 up, you know, to pay yeah. this nigga to make a video game for Plus, us real quick. Good. Oh, hire some programmers or artists. Because <laughs> all that shit, you can find people on Fiverr. It's a website. Remember, I broke all this down to y'all a couple of episodes back. It's a website called Fiverr. You can pay people to make shit for you. You got to pay them. They, they do quality work for you, but it depends on what you want. Some people try to want 50. Some people charge twenty, <laughs> you know? but you can use that. You, it's ways to make people to like make things for you, do things for you. But you do need a team. You got, you, you, you can't do team. shit alone. Straight up, you need a team. You need a team, no matter what. Yeah, and that's what we try to talk about in the call to action thing. We want niggas to hit us up so we can get some team shit going. Let's let's build some shit that's so we're not too relying on jobs and other people. Don't, don't you want to not work for nobody? You're like, oh, shit, man, I got a video game. I make, you know, I get 500 a, a month coming in every month. Okay, I'm going to make a second game, so I get another 500 coming in every month, you know? Like, niggas ain't even thinking about making multiple type of things. Like, motherfuckers just, I need, I need to be popping now in the money now. Like, well, that doesn't happen like that. You're nobody. No one yeah. knows you. <laughs> People have to know you first. You have to put your, your place your name out there. You put- All right. People gotta trust your name, your brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but people don't wanna do that. No. But hey, 
That's all I really got much to say. I really don't have nothing else. <laughs> it's just, uh, I just, I don't understand why people can't apply knowledge. People just sit back, laugh, giggle, and they just take the information, and that's it. And mental masturbate. Oh, well, I know it. Okay, well, do something with it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, it's like me and Yuki. We sat back. We know all this shit about, you know, nerd shit. We see the coonery in nerd community. So we thought, you know what? Let's let's apply that shit. We know this shit. We we're pretty knowledgeable. We know about coons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's do that shit. I guess we can wrap it up though. Uh, where can they find you? You can find me on, on my website at yukithesnomad.com. Any new articles? No. Anything down the pipeline? Uh, yeah, a few things. Okay. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash yukithesnomad. Mm-hmm. Every else, this is Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find me at Yuki the Snowman three one four. You can find me. I'm Super Lost Band one hundred eight on Twitter. Um, I'm also on YouTube at the TV Google one hundred eight, and you can find all of our stuff at SwordyNerd.com. Download it, like, share, subscribe. Um, hit us up, email us at SwordyNerd at gmail dot com. We we love talking to y'all. Um, if y'all want to come on the show, hit us up. Uh, at SwordyNerdGmail dot com, we uh, talk to you, see see what you do, um, and we'll see you guys and girls next week. Later.